Yeah. I got five slides and the rest is live demo with actual hardware. <laughs> So if uh, everyone can uh, take a seat, we're going to, Dan uh, Nagel's going to close us out uh, with his talk, with the last talk for the day, and then uh, we'll have uh, some closing remarks. And, and, but uh, Dan is uh, one of uh, the organizers, and he's also the uh, webmaster who was working on the B-Sides website practically daily with constant updates with, as we kept adding new speakers and new sponsors and things. He, he did a great deal of work bringing this event together, keep trying to get a communication out on the web for everybody. Uh, Dan lives here in Huntsville. He's a software engineer, published some books, writes a lot of tools, programs in more languages than I can count, highly skilled software engineer. Uh, and, uh, and so he's got some demos. Uh, to give you, uh, show you, share with you right now on some tools he's been working on. So y'all help me welcome Dan. Thank you, everybody. My name is Dan Nagel, and I have some demos to show you. This is actually going to be a very scary demo for me because, one, it is five slides, the 30 minutes of live demo, with actual hardware, no virtual machines, and I really hope everything works out. So, first of all, uh, reverse engineering network device APIs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse engineer a desktop app that is controlling my Raspberry Pi connected up to a speaker. It is a network-based Raspberry Pi audio player that I wrote. And I'm going to reverse engineer the desktop app that talks to it and uh, control it myself without having used the desktop app. So, and to do this, I'm going to use a tool that I wrote called Packetsender. It's available right now, packetsender.com. It's available on those platforms. You can download it now. Uh, last time I looked at it, it was getting around 100 downloads a day. So it's well used. And what I'm not going to show you, but a very useful tool, is the command line interface. And let me show you the syntax right here. Packet sender, that's the command. There's various uh, command line switches, and I won't go over all of them, but this is basically says, use TCP, use mixed ASCII, wait half a second, and then connect to, it takes DNS, IPv4, IPv6, a host port, and then data, and it takes slash codes like slash n, slash r, slash slash, and slash hex bytes. And I hit enter, and you can see there, connected to that address, got that response, and I got that response. I hit an uh, open SSH server, as you can see here. I won't be showing that, but I want to make you aware of it in case you wanted to include packet sender in some of your bash scripting or Python scripting. And then this is a cheap and easy tool to help you automate some tests in addition to just reverse engineering things. So here's my setup. Uh, it's behind the podium, but you can see it here. I have my laptop with Packetsender and Wireshark, and I have a very special version of Wireshark that I'm going to be showing you that I don't think you've seen yet. It is a beta version of Wireshark, which adds some, you know, just throws some extra chance on this demo fire. But uh, I wanted to show you the beta version because it's built using the same toolkit that I used to build packet sender. So I think that's a pretty good endorsement of my toolkit. And it is connected to my Raspberry Pi via Ethernet, and I'm powering it with my USB on my laptop, and it's connected to my audio player, and it's going to take my network commands and play music. So those are the five slides. So let's get with the live demo. And here's a, the web page itself, if you want to download it. It runs on just about everything. So let's minimize this. And here is Raspberry Pi Player. Most network devices that you buy, uh, 
from, say, Roku or any kind of network device, the first thing that the app needs to do is find a device on your network. And there's two very common ways to do this. One is to send a broadcast packet out on a particular port and to get the response. The other way is to use multicast. The device will subscribe to a stream, send packets, and the receiving app subscribes to that same stream, receives those packets at a particular port. That's how it knows where it is. So we are going to determine which method that Pi player is using. So I'm going to pull up Wireshark, and this is the beta version of Wireshark. Is anybody familiar with the beta version of Wireshark? There is one key. Well, is everybody here familiar with Wireshark itself? Okay. If you've ever run Wireshark on a Mac, you'll know that you need to launch uh, the X11 service. And it's usually the X core, and it shows up right there. It's an X11 server. Wireshark beta is being rewritten to where it does not need that anymore. So that's why I wanted to show this to you uh, so you can be aware. And it, it's very beta. You'll see me closing it out and restarting it again because it gets confused. But it's good enough for this demo. So you can see it didn't find my Thunderbolt port. So I'm going to close it out and start it up again. There, I found my Thunderbolt port. And I'm going to capture on, it's not seeing my Thunderbolt port again. Let's try one more time. Thunderbolt, UDP, there we go. Now let's see if we can find my Raspberry Pi player. I found my Raspberry Pi. And what did it do? 255255255, that's the broadcast address. So it sent a broadcast packet. That's my IP address, and it sent find units. That's the data packet. And you can see my Raspberry Pi. I now know the address. It replied back to me, uh, and it said server address 192, and it gave its address, which could also be picked up from the source. So broadcast to what port? Port 15,000. Now I'm going to launch Packet Sender and recreate what this Pi Player app just did. So here's Packet Sender. This is my app that I wrote. Uh, it's been in off and on development as a ho hobby project for about four years, and I'm going to set up uh, some packets. So this one is called discover and the data was find units so let's make it find units it does automatic ascii to hex translation and if you can see here i'm going to show you the slash codes 0d 0a carriage return line feed if you want something that's not ascii you do slash and the data bytes themselves. You can see I, that's 98 and FF. So it's a mixed ASCII notation. So find units, broadcast address, port 15,000, whoops, 15,000, UDP. I'm going to save that, go to the traffic log. First, let's select the packet, go to traffic log, send, and there it is. So I just recreated the discover process of that app. And you can see the response right there. Server address, 192.168.0.169. So let's take a look at these other buttons. Song 1, Song 2, and Toggle. I'm going to take this out of UTP, UDP filter, and I'm going to add my other filter, 192.1.1.169, and TCP. So start. There we go. Hopefully it's running. Pack, uh, this beta version gets confused. So 
Let's send song one command. There it is. So my Raspberry Pi uh, music player just took that command and started playing the song. And I'm going to tell it to play song two. So my Raspberry Pi is now playing song two. Toggle command and stop. So I'm going to recreate these TCP packets into packet center. So I no longer need this app. So let's scroll up here and see everything that I did. So scroll down. There's my command. The app sent play zero. So let's go ahead and add play zero. This is song one. It sent play zero. It sent it to 192.168.0.169. Is it the same port? You can see it sent it to port 15,000, so it's the same port, except it's TCP this time. So save, and let's find out what the other song was. And here is the other song is play one, so, and let's see what the toggle command was. There's the toggle command. The toggle command is toggle. And now the stop command is stop. So I can go ahead and add those to packet sender. So this is song two. Let's play one. Save that. This is toggle. Toggle. Save that. And stop, stop, save that, select all. When you select a packet on the packet side, it shows up as a quick button on the traffic log, so you can see it really easy. So let's clear out my log and discover. There's the discover. Let's do song one. And I recreated that packet that Wireshark caught song one and you can see the response right here you can go to settings and i can pick up uh, the traffic log ascii put it right there and we can see it a little easier so it applies back with the song that's playing now here's song two i was playing song two let's get song one let's toggle there we go Now, stop. So I recreated that app using Packet Sender and Wireshark, so I no longer need that app. Now, that was about 15 minutes to do all that. And I still have plenty of time, so I have another demo to show you, one that's more security related. This is more uh, network troubleshooting, uh, programming development related. I want to show you an actual malware detection feature that you can use with Packet Sender. If you look down here at the bottom right, UDP, that port number, TCP port number, Packet Sender has built in a UDP server and TCP server on the dynamic port that you specify. And this is very e useful for malware detection. And I'm going to do a live capture of my Raspberry Pi. And I suspect that there's going to be something nefarious going on. But we don't know what it is yet. So let's clear out my filter. Actually, let's just restart it and do a live capture. Who has 192.168.0.1. Why would uh, my Raspberry Pi be ARPing for that address? That's the gateway, correct. It's ARPing for the gateway. Why would it want the gateway? Right. It's trying to send a packet to the outside world, a packet that's outside a subnet, so it has to send it to the gateway 
to be routed to the internet. I'm on a local network, so I can't reach the gateway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the gateway and see what it's trying to do. So I'm going to add a second IP address to my computer. That's the gateway address. So add it to Thunderbolt. Manual 192.168.0.1. Subnet doesn't really matter too much. 68.0. I am my own router. Close that out. And let's get Wireshark going again. Wireshark's confused again. So let's just restart it. Live capture. See what it's doing now. It's doing, that's my Mac talking. What is this? What's it doing here? It's trying to reach that address. So my Raspberry Pi at dot zero dot one sixty nine is trying to open a TCP connection to one ninety two one eighty five thirty eight dot twenty two. I don't know what that address is, but it's trying to connect to it, and it's trying to connect to it on port five thousand. Now, normally, you've seen several of these demos when there's a piece of malware trying to talk to the outside world. They usually choose port eighty, so that's less nefarious. I intentionally made it talk to 5,000 because I wanted it to stand out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it talk to that address and see what it's going to do. So let's add another network address. Thunderbolt Ethernet, create manual address. 192.168. Whoops, no, that's not what I wanted. 192.185. And I'll just make up a subnet. 0 0.1. Apply. Close this out. This is my Apple computer talking. All right, see it? Did you see that pass by? Actually, let me stop. So it found the address, but the port is blocked because I don't have a server running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a packet sender and I'm going to give them port 5000 using the built in TCP server. So Let's give them port 5000. Look at that. I caught the packet. And who here is familiar with Nmap? <laughs> you can see here that my Raspberry Pi did a port scan of my MacBook, and I was trying to talk out to the internet to connect to that address on port 5000 and deliver what it found. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and drop it right there. Packet Sender only captures the first full packet, which is a one kilobyte. But you can see here, it found that I had a OpenSSH running on 22 and I have a BNC on 5900. And if it scrolled down, it would have my operating system and just about anything else that you can dig from running an intensive port scan on the local area network. So it would take that and deliver the goods to the internet. And I caught it right here. So that is my demos. And I actually did that a little early. So I have time for questions. Are there any questions about packet sender or this process that I just showed. Somebody ask a question. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>